All right, so here's an example for you. We've got an unknown distribution with mean 36 and standard deviation 4.34. So let's just to the side, right? The mean of the original distribution is 36, and the standard deviation of the original is 4.34. We'll write that down. Okay, it says a sample of size 100 is drawn. So that's your n. n is 100. And I want you to realize that I want you, we need to view this particular sample as just one of all possible samples of size 100. That's really the key to understanding the central limit theorem, I think. So let me slide part A down here. And uh, here we go. So it says, what's the probability that the sum of the 100 values is more than 3650? And so, okay, so first off, sum, we know that's just sigma x. So I'm really asking, what's the probability that sigma x is greater than 3650? Well, uh, we need to realize that sigma x is normally distributed. And its mean is the sample size, 100, times the original mean, which is 36. And then square root of the sample size, so square root of 100, I'm just going to switch that to, to 10. I think we can do that. 10 times the original standard deviation of 4.34. And so this is just what uh, normal with mean 3600 and standard deviation 43.4. Got a little extra thing there. There we go. So once we realize that, that as my samples vary, I'm looking at all possible samples of side size 100, as my samples vary, the sum of those samples vary, and they don't just vary, they vary in a very predictable way. They follow the normal distribution with mean 3600, standard deviation 43.4, and so that actually allows me to standardize this. This is the same thing as the probability that z is greater than 3650 minus 3600 over 43.4, so what is that? That's just uh, 50 over 43.4, and that's 1.15. So this is the probability that z is greater than 1.15207. We'll just use the first two decimals. We can round to 1.15 for our table. So you've got, th this is a, a right-hand tail, by the way. Maybe draw the picture in case you're not sure. Uh, 1.15, you want to be greater than that. So this is just a right tail. So thankfully, you've got a table for that. We can go to our right tail table. 1.15 is right there. So the value that we want is 0 0.1251. So this is just 0 0.1251. That's the uh, probability that the sum of these 100 values is more than 3650. All right, so part B, I ask us, what's the probability that the average of the 100 values is less than 35? We'll add a question mark there. And so we need to realize that like the sum, the average is also, the, the average of all possible samples is also normally distributed. So X bar is normally distributed with mean, the same as the original mean, which I believe was 36, yep. And then it's the standard, devi the original standard deviation, 4.34. Yep. And then I want to divide by root n. So root 100, well, that's just 10. So we'll just put a, a 10 down there. So this is uh, x is approximately normal with mean 36 and standard deviation, 0.434. And once I know that, then I can write down the question that I want. I want the probability that x bar, the average, that's where I'm getting x bar from, of the 100 values is less than 35. And to be able to compute that, again, I can standardize. This is just, I can standardize because as the samples vary, x bar uh, has its own distribution and it's normal. And so I'm allowed to convert the, I, I can convert the normal distribution for x to the standard normal distribution by just, uh, standardizing with z squared. So I get uh, the probability that z is less than, okay, this is 35 minus 36 divided by 0.434. And so what? That's negative 1. 
divided by 0.434, and I get negative 2.304. So this is the probability that z is less than negative 2.3041. Okay, so maybe sketch a picture so we can keep track of this. So we want to be, here's negative 2.03, or sorry, 2.30, right here. We want to be less than that, so we want this side, and we can use symmetry and realize, oh, that's the same as the tail over here, 2.30. So I can use, uh, I'll flip it with our probability notation. This is z greater than 2.3041. And now I can use my right tail table, and I'll just use 2.3. So 2.30 right here, 0 0.017. Whoa. So I get, uh, this is... 0 0.01, was it a 7? I forgot, sorry. Uh, 2.30 is 0 0.0107. Okay, there we go. 0 0.0107. So that's the probability that the average of the 100 values is actually less than 35. And the reason why that's the case is the standard deviation is so small, right? We're, we're, uh, we're looking at what's beyond more than two standard deviations away, you know, is going to be very, very small. All right, so that's that. I uh, would encourage you look over your notes. If you have questions, stop by my office hours or the Math Assistance Center. You can also reach out on Teams as well. A picture of your work and a question uh, is very helpful. I, I might be able to respond. Ciao for now.